friends. Hey, Surf Stephen J. Hey. How you doing, buddy? Pretty good, thank you. Hey, come on in. Oh, thank you. Sit right down there. Yeah, have a nice I'll seat right next that. to you. Oh, chair right next to you. Well, well, a place to put that. I got a counter up there if you want to. Thank you. Park it. Don't let me forget it. I need. I to will get not back. let All you right. forget it. No way. Well, I was in the area down the street. Yes. Fizzing Stan. Stan Senior. Oh yeah, the woodworker. Yeah, he's a. He's been doing that for a long time. Fantastic man. Good guy. And I said, well, I'm right down the street. I might as well stop by and see my buddy Vance. Well, I'm glad you did. Thank you. And I was telling all the people that happened to join me today about your guitars and how beautiful they were. And, well, I thought you people? might show it to them. Yeah, the people right here. Just show, uh, like, show the guitars. I don't see any people. They're right there. All right. <laughs> what did you say? Yeah, well, go ahead and humor me. I will. Uh, this is one of my personal koa guitars. It's made from compression koa from Hawaii. And it's one of the fanciest koa woods I've been able to find anywhere in Hawaii. And it's my favorite instrument. So you make all your guitars out of the Hawaiian koa wood? Yes. Yes. It's the oh, wow. best wood in the world. It is. You know, uh, the koa wood in Hawaii is only found in Hawaii. That's true. And it was the wood of the kings. Only the kings were allowed to have anything made out of koa wood. Absolutely. So that's beautiful. I mean, that wood is just absolutely gorgeous. Yeah, it is. It's, it, no two pieces are alike either. All the wood is different. Even though I make all my guitars out of koa wood, they're all different. Now, what about this guitar? Do you know any history of the wood that was used to make this particular yes, guitar? Yes, this was bought from a Hawaiian that actually has a permit from the Hawaiian government to go up into the mountains and dig these out of the, the roots out of the ground, the koa roots from old blown down trees from like five or six hundred years ago. Well, if, if you have a minute... Would you mind just, I know there's a lot that goes into making these guitars. Oh, yes. But could you just take a second to, like, kind of explain briefly, you know, the how you do it. The process. Yeah, yeah. Because it would take us a couple of weeks if I went through everything. So yeah, yeah. I don't true. think you got that much time. No, I, no I, I got to get back. But, but anyway. Yes. Uh, okay. The first thing you do is you get the wood from Hawaii. Because that's do. the only yep. place you can get it. And you get the wood and, okay, what do you do? I bring it over here. I, I buy it in uh, blocks that measure about 9 inches wide by 2 inches thick by 21 inches long. And I take them up on my bandsaw upstairs in my shop and I slice them into flitches. A flitch is a little thin wafer that keeps cutting off the board as you go. And when you get two that are right next to each other, they're called a matched flitch. And I put them together to form this seam. You can see the seam right uh -huh. here. So there's a half flitch, another half that came off the, the, the block of wood. And then I glue them together in a form upstairs and brace them. And that makes it a big enough board now so I can cut out the sound hole and do the intricate design work on the front. And also I can do the same for the back. Here's another flitch. Wow. And another flitch. And I do all my inlaying before I glue them all together so I don't ruin everything. And, and you have... Uh some type of a um, or template, right? Yes, I have a plastic template I use to uh, trace out the outer shape, and I can tell exactly what that guitar is going to look like before it's even sprayed out with finish and stuff. And I see this on the back. You put some fish. Yes, these are Manini Tangs from Hawaii. They're my favorite fish that I snorkel with in Hawaii, and I thought it looked great. It looked like they're swimming through waves of water in the That's back beautiful. of my guitar. Let me see that. Isn't look that cool? at that. Wow. And what would you make those fish out of? Uh, it's called Power Shell. And that's a, uh, a lighter colored. Sometimes it's rainbow colored. This is to duplicate the silver color of the fish scales. So, so now that you have, okay, you got the front here. Yep. Size and, and you got sides in the top. Okay. Right. I take the sides, which are cut out of a skinny block of koa wood. Similar idea. It's a thick block, but it's a lot more narrow. I flitch that out, and I take two matching pieces side by side. I run them through my drum sander, make them real thin, and then I put them in a heated form and I press them into shape. So this side would be the cutaway shape. The cutaway means I can bring my hand further down on the fretboard. And I bend that side out and then I match it and I bend another side opposite it. And then that goes in a dry form and that's where I start clamping it up and gluing Well, you know, I never braces. knew what that was for, that cutout on some of these models right. of guitars. And uh, me with my, I got like short fingers and, and like fat hands, I guess. I would need that yes, to get down. It really helps you get the higher notes. Especially if I was playing a lead, you know what I mean? Definitely. You want, you want all the room you <laughs> yeah, can well, get. Yeah, that's going to happen. So some guitars have that and some don't. It depends on uh, preference to the, the actual musician. So this is pretty much the sides and we got the top and I'll put it in a special uh, f uh, flat board and I'll take a router and I'll route in these beautiful inlays around the sound hole and I'll actually cut out the sound hole with a little Dremel on a 
on a compass rose and that that's how I get that design in that um, that's a whole process okay move these all together make the, the box they call this the box and then I move on to the neck the neck the now next another now whole I, process I know what the neck is I right. know this is the neck right yep. there this is the neck and you got quilted maple on this neck and that's oh, all beautiful. carved out of blocks of quilted wow. maple where do you get your quilted maple from? That comes from the Midwest and big leaf maple. It's, it's a special maple that has a disease in it and it makes these beautiful swirls. Really? Patterns. So looks it's like, disease looks maple? Like, yeah, designed, uh, looks like taffy boiling on the stove, you know, taffy candy. Oh, oh man. And so I carve that out um, and then I add a, a, a fretboard made out of solid uh, Madagascar ebony. It comes from the Madagascar. island of Madagascar. It's the blackest, hardest wood in the world. And that's so the frets will stay in. There's little slots that I cut across here, and I measure out a nice music scale, and I cut these frets in and press them in with a special press, and polish now, them all now out. Now I have a question. Them. Question, real quick. So is a fretboard part of the head? No, the head is a separate piece than the fretboard. The fretboard is just this black piece of wood that stretches from here to here. It's part of the neck, and it's actually grafted on with a slice. It's like a 15 degree angle slice right here you can barely see a seam and you glue that on and then you put a piece of veneered koa like eighth inch thick koa on top of that glue that together and it makes a nice strong angled piece and that's to bend the strings so they sound good when they go across this piece of uh, uh, well wow material. that's a lot and you talk about that's just some of it that's just some of it and then there's drilling the holes and putting the machine tuners in and uh, putting the carved emblems well, in there's a lot of steps to that I'm getting confused I know I know one thing though. I know that I could never ever make one of these guitars. How did you get into it? Well, I played for a while and I played other guitars and I just got so interested and I says, wonder if I could build a guitar. I'm a woodworker. Yeah. So I bought a book and the book was really informative and then I had a friend that knew a guy that used to work in a guitar factory and he helped me out too. Well, you know, you can give me all the books you know, you can find about it and you can give me all the people who know how to do it and instruct me on how to do it, but I couldn't do it. I, well, I think you have to have it more than that. You have to have a I tell. did have some background have in woodworking and, okay. you know, refinishing antiques and restoration and uh, doing finishes and building cabinets. So I'm sure that helped a lot. But, you know, I think anybody, if they took it real slow and used the book and some, you know, <laughs> videos or something, they could probably come up with a good instrument. <laughs> yeah, well, I'd come up with a lot of boo-boos, I'll tell you that. Yeah. Like Band-aids well, and everything else. Well, I've made some mistakes along the line, don't you worry. And I see these guitars over here, they're just... Wonderful. Yes, Look I've at got those things. probably seven or eight different models that I produce, and some have cutaways in them. I got some that are uh, smaller version. They're they're called an actual um, parlor guitar, and so they're easy to carry around and take with you on a camping trip or whatever you oh, want to yeah. do with it. That's nice. And I've actually made ukuleles. Ukuleles. Yes, the uh, ukulele. The Hawaiian instrument adopted from Portugal. That's where Portugal. I, I couldn't come up with the country. They invented it, but the Hawaiians actually made it popular. And so you hear a lot about Hawaiian ukulele players, and uh, what was that one, that guy that you knew? There was a guy oh. that used to play yeah, Tiptoe yeah. Through the Tulips yeah, or something. Yeah, right. yeah. yeah that was a long Well, time he was ago. famous. And anyway, I make two models of those. I make a tenor ukulele and a uh, baritone, which is a bigger model. Well, I noticed in the cabin over here, you do have an ukulele. Yeah, that's the baritone and, ukulele. But it looked too big to be a regular ukulele. Yeah, it's like a shrunk down guitar, but only has four strings. And it has a deeper sound than the other ukuleles. That Are they harder with. to play than a guitar with six strings? Well, I don't know. I played for a while on them. I'm not real good at playing on ukuleles, but um, I would say they're easier because a lot of people use that as their first instrument to start playing with. Well, these are beautiful guitars you got down here. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Which brings me to my next question. Okay. What is up with the Tropical Fish Store? <laughs> well, that's another passionate hobby of mine that I started about 40 years ago. And I've always done tropical fish. I've been working in other pet shops for years and years. I just love the color and the peacefulness of it and collecting them and, and doing everything about it. And now I like helping people get their own fish tanks together and stuff. So what makes your uh, tropical fish store unique from somebody else's tropical fish store? Well, we concentrate just on fish. And we don't do dogs and cats and birds and all that stuff. We help the customer, and we've had so much experience behind us that we can give them success with they want to do a saltwater aquarium, which is a little more advanced, or a freshwater aquarium, which is probably the most popular that we do sell. And so do you have any spots in your store that uh, 
You like it? Oh yeah, yeah. There's a touch tank over Your there. Your favorites? It's, oh, touch tank's my favorite. So saltwater touch tank with tropical. Really? Starfish and urchins and you can, snails and clams. You can a touch tank like. There's uh, even you a lobster. It. Yeah, so, you can touch the animals. There's a lobster in there. There's a little miniature purple lobster that likes to bite fingers, but oh he's God. still cool. He's been here for two or three years now. Oh, the African cichlid tanks. They're real pretty. They're bright colored freshwater fish from the biggest, deepest lakes in the whole world in Africa, Lake Tanganyika in Malawi. Uh, we also have Australian fish from Australian rivers and streams. And what what makes red. them unique? Oh, Australia. their colors are bright red, and they live a long time. They're fast moving, and they're very peaceful. Uh, we have a glowfish tank, which are genetic, genetically modered, modified tetras. Yeah, yeah. They take DNA from coral and uh, anemones and jellyfish and embed it into the DNA structure. And so these fish glow bright orange, red, and yellow, and blue, and purple. And we also have saltwater, a coral tank, which I think you would like. They got the brilliant coral. hammer corals and anemones. Anemone. Uh, anemones are beautiful, little long tentacled animals that the clownfish like to s a live clownfish? in. Clownfish. Clownfish, yes. They have great paintings on their on their bodies that look like clown paintings. There's probably three or four different colored mushroom rocks. Some are purple, some are green. There's all kinds of brightly colored polyps that have little tentacles that come out. Uh, they're just very unique and you can mix fish with them. But no sharks? No sharks. I have a shark tank though. You're kidding. I have a 1400 gallon shark tank in the other room and we're wow. waiting to get a shark. We're looking for a shark right now. And we have some fish in it, but it's the biggest aquarium I've ever built. So when they talk about a shark tank, I'm going to get a shark. You really have a shark tank? Well, I will. I will have a shark in there eventually. So hopefully in amazing. the next few weeks. Amazing. Well, you know what? You have an amazing place here. Some interesting things here. Thank you very much. But your woodworking is just fantastic. Uh, I love these guitars. Maybe one of these days even I'll be able to get a guitar like this. Well, that'd be great. I'd be happy to help you out too. And thanks, Vance. You're welcome. You're a great man. It was nice to meet Talented you. Talented man. Sir Stephen J. I really artisan appreciate it. Artisan man. There we go. He's the artisan man. I am that. Not a renaissance <laughs> man, but you're no, the artisan man. I'm the artisan man. Hey, thank you very much, and we'll see you. Let me grab the pink bag. I hey, need go to for get it. home, and uh, I'll see you next time. I'll drop by next time I'm up. I'm All hungry. Right. Time to go eat. Yeah, me too. Anytime. I think I'll have fish. Uh, not me. I'm more like a steak eater. Oh, I don't care what you're having. I'm having fish. <laughs> you right. got me in the mood. Thank you. All right, buddy. Take care. You too now. I'm going to finish playing. All right.